Hey guys, so I got a relatively short video for you today. Actually, I don't know if it's short or not. I'm recording this before making the rest of the video, so yeah. Okay, so it's been a while since I talked about Islam, and for good reason. For one, it doesn't really interest me as much as, say, science or creationism or medicine and whatnot, but I did find this video that I thought needed to be addressed a little. And yes, this topic has been beaten to the ground by other atheist YouTubers already, but I have some other arguments related to biology that I feel should be addressed, so let's get started. Really, this is um, from my experience on the comment section on, uh, on my YouTube channel and on my, on my what do you call it, emails. And this is really one of the most oft uh, uh, repeated insults against Muslims. Like, you know, your, your prophet married a nine year old, this kind of thing that always, always comes up. The fact that you even consider that an insult says a lot about you more than atheists. Don't you think devoting so hard to a religion that you'd be insulted by someone simply saying something negative about your religious figure is just. You know, a bit sad. And Muslims, I have no hard feelings towards you. I just raise questions on how you think it's even acceptable at all that Muhammad married a nine-year-old girl. And before anyone asks, I thought of this video upon watching Amos's recent video on... Okay, let's not say that word before we get demonetized here. Amos's recent video on very, very overly friendly relationships with children. I know most people already disagree with him. But just to be sure, for the purposes of this video, let's just agree that pedophilia is bad. Now before I start, I do want to make a, put a quick disclaimer that everything that I'm going to say, be saying right now is going to be for the process or for the purposes of academic discussion. Yeah. So I'm going to be going, <laughs> I'm going to be going into a bit of philosophy, a little bit of anthropology, a little bit of sociology, a little bit of history, and then afterwards I'll come back to the reality. Yeah. Oh my fucking god. I think you just unintentionally called your religion a fairy tale. So the first thing you have to ask the atheist is the following. In your opinion, in your estimation, based on your rationality or your means of finding out the truth, how do you attain objective reality or objective morality? You'll realize that actually the majority of philosophers or philosophers that are atheists come to the conclusion that objective uh, morality doesn't exist. If there is no way of the atheist ascertaining a full truth, which is moral, basically, a, a certain moral truth, then really they have no business asking you any moral question, because their premise is unsubstantiated. We haven't even gotten to the main part of the video and there's already a lot to break down. Okay, yes, atheists usually do say that morality is subjective, and there's no absolute morality. Which is pretty true. But just because objective morality doesn't exist doesn't mean we can't judge others based on a widely universally accepted modern value. Morality is always changing. It was completely different in the past and we learn from it. We can see in hindsight how horrible some of the practices were in the past and we can evolve to eliminate these behaviors. Which means, yes, we can judge people in the past based on our own modern morality standards. Of course, that means that people in the future will likely judge our values today. Which is why I'm all for change and progression of societal values. And we all should really be wary about our own moral decisions today. Anyway, Allah completely condoned this relationship between Muhammad and Aisha, as if not knowing himself about how bad pedophilia Philia is until much later or something. That in itself sounds pretty ridiculous. Also, I can use the same logic against you. If you believe that objective morality exists and is defined by one true God, that means you believe that doing dirty, dirty things with a child is within the boundaries of what's objectively acceptable. And you don't sound like a pedophile defender to me. Anyway, there's still lots to talk about here, but I'm going to keep the video rolling. If you think of the historical era, you'll find that historically, in almost every civilization that has existed, puberty was defining who would be an adult and who wouldn't be. Actually, the majority of people that in the, in the early, before the 1900s, or before the 19th century, he says that adulthood was defined by puberty. Now, if you look at it from a purely biological perspective, and I'm not saying we should do that, but just for a second, if we look at it from a purely biological perspective, there's a book called The Developing Human or human development. Um, and this book says that the majority of females re reach the age of puberty, it's typical for them to reach the age of puberty at the age of 10. This is the biological reality. All right, I let your video play on for long enough. Let's get this straight. Puberty, yes, can start at the age of 10, but, but that is when puberty starts. 
the body is just beginning to release the hormones required for sexual maturation, which is completely different from being sexually mature already. Puberty tends to end around age 16 or so. Of course, that doesn't mean puberty has to be fully complete before the individual is ready for sex. But biologically, there has to at least be some development. Females, for example, need to develop breasts for breastfeeding children once they give birth. Adipose tissue needs to grow in order to create a more suitable environment for pregnancy. Besides, the female's first menstrual cycle typically begins between ages 12 and 13, which is quite a while later after puberty actually begins. And I'm sure we can all agree that having sex before the first menstrual cycle is a pretty big no. I'm going to continue this topic in the next section. But what I am saying to the atheist directly, because it's usually the atheist, and I'll go to the Christian quickly. What I'm saying to him directly or her is that you cannot, under your worldview, do two things. Number one, you cannot superimpose your legalistic definition, which has depended upon the Western paradigm and the cultural atmosphere in the West, and superimpose it on all the other history, historical societies. You can't do that. Yes, I agree, you cannot do that, but only if the sole reason we superimpose our morals is because it's the law, or that it's the standard here. But we don't do that, we can provide actual arguments as to why this is bad, and I'm going to expand upon that right now in a biological perspective. Now this guy didn't actually say this, but I heard this argument a lot from Muslims, so I'm going to introduce it here. They say that Aisha had her first period already, thus it shows that her body is physically mature enough for sexual intercourse. Fair enough. However, let's take a look at what's actually going on here. First First of all, the first few menstrual cycles are actually anovulatory, meaning no ovulation occurs despite full cycle completion. This is because gonadotropin levels may not generate enough estradiol levels for a full LH surge. No LH surge, no ovulation, no progesterone, endometrium sheds off easily. Children experiencing their first menstrual cycles do not have enough gonadotropin signaling to induce the LH surge. So no, the first period doesn't mean she is ready for sexual intercourse. The argument falls off here. Second, Aisha was age 9 when she got violated. The typical first menstrual flow happens at around 12 to 13, like I mentioned earlier. Puberty is caused in a relatively specific manner. The hypothalamus, which is responsible in conjunction to the adenohypophysis for releasing gonadotropins, receives signals from these kiss neurons via the kiss peptin signaling cascade. In simple terms, the activation of this kiss cascade is what triggers puberty to begin. Now back to Aisha. If she had her menstrual cycle at the age of 9, that means her kiss cascade is being activated too early, which is a symptom of precocious puberty, a disease that causes children to undergo puberty too early, especially in girls. Victims typically experience pretty horrible effects such as stage 2 breast development at age 7, increased fat deposition, smaller height growth period, etc., which are all features that could make people upon first glance think the child is ready for intercourse. That means Aisha suffered from a pretty horrible developmental disease and Muhammad took it as a sign that her body is ready. And all of this was condoned by your god who gave Aisha the disease to begin with, possibly by introducing a fucking tumor in her brain, then allowing Muhammad to sexually engage on her. After hearing that, don't you dare come back to me trying to justify this behavior because quite frankly I'm disgusted by it. Anyway, that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next week.